Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. So is anybody really surprised? I'm certainly not. News of the day, breaking. Random New York woman with literally zero evidence wins $83 million in court because orange man bad. That's how every single headline should read. This is the most insane desecration of the American justice system I think we've ever witnessed. This is proof, folks. This is proof that the justice system no longer has any credibility. I'm sure in some places it does, but if it falls in one district or one city or one state, well, then it pretty much tarnishes the whole thing now, doesn't it? I don't know about you guys, but I am so incredibly confused by this ridiculous verdict. Just make Donald Trump the defendant. And as long as the trial is happening in Manhattan, you will reach a guilty verdict. I think we're going to see the same thing in the civil case. We're entering a moment in time where evidence doesn't actually matter. Just accuse the Democrat Party's political enemies of something, some sort of crime. Your entire case will be funded by Democrat mega donors, and you will win, enriching yourself to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. The E. Jean Carroll case here wraps up, and it's got to be the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Let's have a conversation about it. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so for those of you guys who aren't caught up, E. Jean Carroll wins 80 three million dollars in defamation case against Donald J. Trump. Today, a jury ordered Donald Trump to pay writer E. Jean Carroll eighty three point three million dollars, approximately one Trump Park Avenue for defaming her. Breaking that number down a little bit more, the jury awarded E. Jean Carroll eighteen point three million dollars to compensate her for the harm Trump's lies caused her. They awarded her another $65 million in punitive damages to, well, punish Donald Trump, to deter him from defaming E. Jean Carroll ever again. We'll have more on that in just a moment. The nine-member jury took just two hours and 45 minutes to reach its verdict after hearing final arguments from Trump and Carroll's lawyers. Absolutely wild. Millions upon millions of punitive damages. Reputational harm. So supposedly, according to this end result, this verdict, Donald Trump damaged E. Jean Carroll's reputation. Is it just me or is that completely backwards? If anybody destroyed somebody else's reputation, it's E. Jean Carroll going public accusing Donald Trump of something that happened decades ago, not even able to recall the year that it happened, no evidence provided whatsoever. Supposedly, the woman who launched an accusation with literally zero evidence is the one receiving millions of dollars for the purpose of reputational repair, and the other guy is the defamer. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. The idea that her accusation is credible is completely laughable. I urge everybody to go to the nationalpulse.com and read this analysis from Rahim J. Kassam. The article is titled, Kassam, The Trump Carroll Case is Blatantly the Greatest Miscarriage of Justice in Modern American History. This article goes through every single detail that we have covered over the last year plus of this ridiculous case, putting it all into perspective, and most importantly, presenting all of the evidence that the judge in the case refused the Trump team of presenting during the trial. Donald Trump's attorney, Alina Habba, made that point to the media after the the verdict was reached. It is in writing and I encourage the journalists, the real journalists, to take the minute to look at his orders. There was no proof. And I couldn't prove that she didn't bring in the dress. There was no DNA. There was no expert. My experts were denied. Two of them, two of them were denied to come in. They didn't bring, let me bring up that Reed Hoffman funded Ms. Kaplan. And you know what we got in there? That my witness, who was her friend, who said that she is a drug addict and the drug addict is herself. That friend I found out in there was paid for by Ms. Kaplan's firm and that is disgusting. To the ballot box, but don't get it twisted. We are seeing a violation of our justice system, ladies and gentlemen. You are not allowed to be stripped of every defense that you have. You are not allowed to be told that you can't bring it up and imagine a point where a judge tells the lawyer before your client, the former president of the United States, the leading candidate and obvious no nominee for the Republican Party, before he takes the stand to defend himself, Ms. Haba, tell me the questions you're going to ask in open court and tell me exactly what he's going to respond. And then edited my questions, edited the response he was allowed to give. And guess what my client did? He took the stand, 
he abided by the rules of this corrupt system that I have seen, we will immediately appeal. We will set aside that ridiculous jury. And I just want to remind you all of one thing. I will continue with President Trump to fight for everybody's First Amendment right to speak. Whether it's E. Jean Carroll on CNN saying R.A.P.E. is, quote, sexy. I'm not going to play that clip on YouTube for obvious reasons. Whether it's the fact that E. Jean Carroll's story is remarkably similar to an episode of Law & Order, this episode. Uh, ah, role play took place in uh, the dressing room of Bergdorf's. Uh, while she was trying on lingerie, I would burst in. Hold on. Um, man. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget that CNN also reported in 2019 that E. Jean Carroll was an avid Law & Order franchise fan. She claims the similarity is a simple coincidence. We also have very odd E. Jean Carroll Facebook posts, like this one. Then, of course, the Swiss cheese holes in her story, where he makes the point in a tweet, it cannot be stressed enough. She alleged a RAPE in a public place 30 years ago, but provided no evidence. You know, the idea that Donald Trump, a public figure, a massively famous public figure, would commit such an act in a public department store 30 years ago seems so incredibly unbelievable. But let's continue reading the tweet. Her story was remarkably similar to the plot of a show that she binge-watched. The dress that she claimed to be wearing hadn't even been designed at that point. There's, of course, the CNN clip I mentioned earlier. Then, of course, how the pursuing of this case even started in the first place. The whole thing was planned out by George Conway and Molly Jong Fass's house party. Then, of course, the fact that the case itself was funded by Reed Hoffman, a Democrat mega donor. You know, obviously, something isn't adding up. If it was one oddity, it probably wouldn't be that much of a red flag. But this whole story from start to finish is as fishy as could possibly be. This whole plot seemed orchestrated from the Lincoln Project's George Conway. Then, of course, the Reed Hoffman funding the whole operation element. LinkedIn's co-founder helped fund the suit accusing Trump of RAPE. This guy happens to be the exact same Democrat mega donor funding Nikki Haley's super PAC. No surprise why Nikki Haley is tweeting absolute nonsense like this. Donald Trump wants to be the presumptive Republican nominee, and we're talking about $83 million in damages. We're not talking about fixing the border. We're not talking about tackling inflation. America can do better than Donald Trump and Joe Biden. What an absolute tool. Continued political weaponization of this E. Jean case, completely ignoring the fact that the case itself had no frickin' merit whatsoever. You know, obviously there's some sort of larger plan here, where the only logical explanation seems to be some sort of deep state weaponization of the justice system in order to get these headlines. I mean, the number itself is so ridiculously arbitrary. The judge just signing off, yeah, you know what? Not $10 million, not $20 million, no. $83 million. Why? Well, because orange man bad. That seems to be what's going on here. How can you take somebody to court with literally zero evidence, not an iota of evidence? You don't even remember when it happened, and it supposedly happened 40 years ago, and then magically walk away having won tens upon tens Tens of millions of dollars. I mean, I am at a complete loss for words. It's kind of hard to make commentary for these videos because I just don't know what to say. I mean, what can I say other than what I have said? There's no way that people are perceiving this as a legitimate verdict. Now, obviously, there's the blue anon crowd, but rational, critical thinkers, there's no way. Obviously, it's a political weapon. That's why we're seeing Nikki Haley, who's funded by Reed Hoffman, spread the Reed Hoffman message. That's why we saw Mitt Romney, another deep state actor, make the outrageous claim that Donald Trump was found guilty of RAPE when he was not. Not to mention the myriad of journalists and politicians doing the same. The DOJ has been weaponized to go after anti-establishment, uniparty enemies. I mean, just think about the recent list. Alex Jones gets deplatformed, put on trial for something he said over a decade ago and has apologized vehemently for. I'm not saying he was in the right for what he said, but the whole process was obviously a deep state orchestrated railroading of an imperfect private citizen. And then he gets hit with what, over a billion dollars in damages for something he said 10 years ago? How do you even quantify that? We saw what happened with Steve Bannon, Michael Flynn, Roger Stone, and now, of course, what's happening with Donald Trump. The deplatforming, the gag orders, all these ridiculous cases, and specifically what happened in New York City where they changed the law just so E. Jean Carroll could bring the case forward. I've never seen anything so ridiculous how somebody so clearly not credible can win a case with literally no evidence. You know, I think the general reaction is that of shock and frustration, but something tells me that they're stepping too far with this stuff, and the American people outside of the 
vote blue no matter who MSNBC brainwash crowd simply won't fall for this obvious political weaponization of the courts. I mean, let's really put it into perspective. Let's just TLDR the thing. A totally non-credible woman with multiple conflicts of interest can simply make an accusation in order to promote her book, and she admitted that on the stand. With no evidence, nothing can walk away with $83 million in defamation damages, punitive damages, simply because the guy she accused said, no, that never happened, and you're a whack job. That is the most wild, insane thing I think that has ever happened in politics. You got to admit these Democrats play dirty. They're certainly brazen. The question is, will it be a political miscalculation? I tend to think it probably will be. I mean, people are probably discussing this case with their friends at dinner tables, with their families. There's no way that people are coming to the conclusion that this is a credible accusation. There's simply no way. I mean, that cannot be the case. And that's pretty much what I'm sticking with nothing new just another arbitrary punitive number 83 million dollars because orange man bad how utterly ridiculous that's what i got for you guys though hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one